Uh, greetings, math fans. All right, so this is day five. And if you remember in day four, we basically wanted to show whether something was different, a function was differentiable. Okay, and we actually did it the formal way. And the formal way was actually showing with limits um, and um, proving that that it was differentiable or not differentiable. Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to do the informal method. And how do you know whether to use informal or formal? First of all, you're going to use informal and formal based on what I tell you to do. Okay, for a quiz or test. But let's talk about AP exam. How do you know when they're going to be asking for formal and for and when for informal? You guys need to realize they're going to be asking for formal if it's a free response question, and they say. Um, you know, tell us if this uh, function is differentiable at x equals blah. And then you're going to have to show using calculus, using limits, um, if it is differentiable at that point. All right? Um, if, they, if it's a multiple choice question, you don't need to be formal about it. Because if you know the answer, you, are, you need to be somewhat efficient and quick about it and get the answer. Okay, so let's talk about um, determining differential differentiability. All right. Um, first thing we're going to do, let's talk about identifying things. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to identify. Identify um, you know, vertical tangents, etc., all the different things. So the first thing I want to talk about is absolute value. And how do you, what, if you see anything with absolute value, whatever function is, what's it going to be? It's going to be a corner. You know that because, remember, here's absolute value. You got one slope going the other way, the other slope going the other way, so they're different slopes not infinite and not negative or positive infinity, right? Because that's something different. So these are, um, this is going to be a corner. Okay, again, just recognizing it. Uh, the second thing you're going to have is um, a step function. Or piecewise function. That's truly what I want to talk about here, is really the piecewise function. Right? What's a piecewise function going to give you? Well, first of all, you have to check for continuity. So it may not even be continuous to that value. In fact, isn't that what a step function is, right? The step function is not going to be continuous. Okay? But then the second part is for, um, uh, for differentiability, right? Looking at slopes, uh, the only thing it really can be is a corner. Okay, and the corner doesn't have to be a, like a nice solid angle. It can be, it can look like this, and then, you know, something like this. Right, as long as there's some, some little, uh, as long as you're looking at the slopes, um, and those are different, it is a corner. Now, obviously, again, it can't be infinite, uh, positive infinity, negative infinity, or negative, negative, positive, positive infinity. It's going to be something with a corner. So it can be anything here. Here's another one here, right? And I could say, uh, you know, like something like this, okay? And, you know, if you got to check that value right there, checking that value, okay? But that is a possibility for a, uh, uh, where it's not differentiable. Okay, the third kind is if I give you something with an odd root and an even power. For example, y equals x to the two-thirds. So before I answer this, I want you to think about this a little bit first, okay? So kind of in your brain, tell me, is this, well, we know it's probably going to be a vertical tangent or it's probably going to be a cusp, okay? And what's the answer going to be? Well, right off the bat, you see this, don't you? You see that two there, and you're like, oh, okay. So when you square something, doesn't it become positive? So it's, if, if you have a negative value, it becomes positive. If you have a positive value, it becomes positive. So you guys agree that this is a um, a vertical tangent, right? Well, this is what I want you to do. I want you to put a big X through that. 
because it's not a vertical tangent. Now, I don't want you guys to get confused and say, oh, geez, it's two-thirds. Because remember when we did the problem yesterday? We actually did the limit as h approaches 0. Let's just do it from the negative side. Wasn't that h to the two-thirds over h to the one, or h to the three-thirds, or just h? And that actually turned out to be limit as h approaches 0 from the negative side of 1 over h to the 1 third. That's truly what we're looking at, math fans, not the actual function of x to the 2 thirds. Okay, now you look at it and say, oh, what happens when it comes from the negative side? Okay, it comes from the negative side here. It's actually going to stay negative. So this is equal to negative infinity. And if I say limit as h approaches 0 from the positive side of 1 over h to the 1 third power, that's going to be positive infinity. So this is not a vertical tangent. This is a cusp. And if I actually graph this, I mean, think about it, math fans. It's y equals x to the 2 thirds. It's always going to be positive, so it's going to look like this. Okay, because it's positive, but yet it's two thirds, so it's less than one. It's not linear like it's going to go straight. It's actually going curving down towards, uh, um, you know, to the right or to the left. Okay, so watch that. Um, and now obviously, uh, this is a this is definitely an odd root and even power. But think a little bit logically. I mean, you can definitely do the limit. And one thing I want to stress here: if you don't know what it is informally, you do it formally. You sketch. You know, you you take the limit and you figure it out formally. It's very important. All right, so let's take a look at our fourth type then. Um, we're going to do a um, an odd root and an odd power. So it's going to be like y equals x to the one-third power. Okay, so don't get don't get thrown off by this again, right? I don't want you guys, I mean, I tried to, I tricked you at the beginning, okay? But I don't want you to get just thrown off and go, oh, it's a 1 there, so it's got to be a positive infinity and negative infinity. Nope, it's not. So what you're going to do here is, again, let's investigate this real quickly, and then you're going to be good to go after this. Um, h approaches 0 from the negative side of h to the 1 third over h to the 3 thirds, which is limit as h approaches 0 from the negative side of 1 over h to the 2 thirds. Now, when that goes to an, from a negative value, when you square it, it becomes positive. So this is truly positive infinity. And the same thing, limit as h approaches 0 from the positive side of 1 over h to the 2 thirds. That's equal to positive infinity. So these are both positives. So this is a vertical tangent. OK? And also, I don't want you guys to get confused. Like, if you have y is equal to you know, um, let's just say uh, uh, two or uh, x to the two fourths. Okay, you always reduce it, so it's going to be y is equal to x to the one half power. All right, and just that's actually a good point. If I have y equals x to the one half power, um, I really don't have to worry about this one, right? There's not even a vertical tangent or a uh, a cusp. Because isn't that's like the same thing as saying square root of x? Isn't that look like this? This doesn't have a negative component to it. Okay, you can't have a negative component. Okay, so it's not differentiable actually at that point either, right? Because you have no negative component. You have no component over there. All right. But let's uh, going back to this problem. The uh, y equals x to the two thirds. I could have had something like y equals x to the four over six, and then make sure you write it as y equals to um, x to the two thirds. All right, so remember, um, use your limits if you're not sure. Otherwise, recognize absolute value as a corner. Uh, if it's a piecewise function, it could be a corner, could not be uh, continuous. Um, if it's like y equals x to the two-thirds power, um, that's actually um, going to be a cusp. And y equals x to the one-third power, that's going to be a vertical tangent. Oh, I didn't graph y equals x to the one-third power. I think I wanted to graph that. So think about it, math fans. Doesn't it look like this? Right? And there, that slope is undefined over there. So that's why there is a vertical tangent at x equals 0 for that one. OK? Anyway, um, it's a pretty fast lesson. And that's uh, kind of what you're doing, um, is just identifying whether something is uh, you know, 
differentiable or not using an informal method. All right, that's it, Mad fans. That was a fast lesson. Adios. Goodbye.